there guys and girls and welcome to episode number one of Sinbad's The Merchant's Chronicles. Here we are, uh, a lot of you actually really positively reacted to this idea. Some people were skeptic that it wouldn't work, that it was taking so long. And you know what? I've thought of all those things. Um, so let's go ahead and just describe what this series is going to be in episode number one. Uh, for you guys just before that if you guys are liking this new mountain blade warband series and looking forward to seeing some merchant gameplay smash that like button for me uh it will really help you don't understand uh how much interaction helps in uh, getting your content out there and getting it into the search engine and stuff like that so just fuck sh share the shit out of the video man share the shit out of the video so from last time you saw this um by the way, the music that I'm listening to isn't part of this mod. You can find the links to both the mod and the music in the description below. I'm listening to a 10 hour music Celt track, Celtic music track, so it's gonna be a while before it runs out. So, previously in the episode, I told you guys um, kind of like my plans, and um, uh, I I'll go more into detail here, but there has been a small problem. The cities of Durkaba and Ahmarad have been taken by the Kurgits. I'm currently a Lord of the Serenids. I, I became a Lord of the Serenids because when I did, these two cities were still Serenid, and I was like, well, most of my operations are really based on Serenid cities uh, being wealthy, so let's just join the Serenids. That was the biggest mistake I could have done. A merchant needs to always stay neutral. Uh, that is the given fact. So what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm trying to marry a girl now in, in, in the mod. And she is Sultan Hakim. He wants us to be in Sheriz. That's excellent. That's where we're headed. We're gonna go to Sheriz now. We're gonna start the episode by relinquishing our vassalage. Um. So oh, there's gonna be a. There's going to be a tournament tomorrow, most like. These two won't go away. Um, for some reason. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you guys real quick. Uh, we've improved him a bit. Uh, we've improved him bad a little bit. Still got the same cool face. But now he, he's won this cool armor. Uh, again, his stats are very kind of this oriented. And you can see we've got pathfinding up to six. You'll notice that our pathfinding over here is... Um, there's like a green thing on it and I'm gonna explain how that comes about so that comes about from our reports page here if you go to personal reports in this mod then you go to character abilities your character gets a new ability every a few level so I've got wholesaler which removes changes in price due to purchasing multiple of the same item at a single merchant this is the single most crucial thing that actually made this let's play possible is that this was the thing that was making it like profitable enough to actually risk going around in in circles trailblazers increases my pathfinding my two the number of party members you can conceal using the same stealth ability is double i don't have the stealthy ability and then silver tongued to allow me to talk my way out of uh rough situations so that's that so yeah we're gonna wait here for the night and when it when it becomes daytime I have a village at Ayan Asudi, and it's being it's being raided by the. Um, uh, it's being raided by. By them, uh, by them Kurgits, man. Can you believe that? So here he is, Sinbad, the merchant. He's got uh, nice banner, nice heraldic armor. Pretty rich guy. Um, we're looking for the Sultan. Hello. Oh, wow, this guy. Oh, this guy. <laughs> the story of this guy is that there was a lady called Lady Safia. And he was into her. And I kind of was like, yeah, I'm going to duel you and kill you. And I did. So this guy doesn't really like me. So I'm just going to ask him where Sultan Hakim is. He's close to Sheriz, he says. We are at Sheriz. Uh, where? Oh, there he is. So we're going to go to Sultan Hakim. 
And man, we're welcoming with Sultan Hakim. Like, see, I've been working my way up the bureaucratic ladder for the Serenade. So this is a tough decision, and this is a moment where this is this is gonna be the place where the series gets a little bit interesting. Um, so we have two main options, two main lines of thought. We either stay with the Serenades and uh, try risking uh, losing our property in Ahmarad, or we. Uh, 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 relinquish our vassalage and we become kind of free roaming again um, it's like a big point in how I'd want to play this um, I'm actually going to um, be released from my oath it is something I must do my lord um, I'm gonna lose the f the the fiefs that's not a problem because uh, I'm going to be replacing one of the fiefs that's generating money for me with uh, uh, with uh, with the building. So we're back to we're back to neutral with everybody. Um, it was an honor to serve you. Farewell. Thank you, Sultan Hakim. And what a way to start! Uh, uh, what a way to start our uh, journey. So now, if we open up the reports over here and we go to our personal and our budget reports. Uh, you'll notice that I am now only making 241 revenue from Ahmarad. And now we're actually going to explain how this thing works. So I've got 21,000 monies. Pretty good. And this is how our journey starts. So Ahmarad is where I own my vineyard. Um, and what a vineyard is, is a, it's a building that takes grapes and it makes wine for you. Now, the reason I built it in Ahmarad is because after countless trading around uh, Calradia, I found out that they always have shortages of wine and always pay the most for it. Next to Shariz, sometimes Bariya, sometimes Durkuba. Um, and I noticed that the Rodox always have cheap grapes in plentiful supply. So, the trip begins, my friends, with us... Uh, going to uh, We're now in Shariz, right? So let's do one kind of trading run and I'll kind of show you guys how I do it The first thing we do is we go to the marketplace. We assess the local prices. My character has high trade We get this list here. It's telling me that spice is selling nicely at Sargoth and Flax bundle it's selling nicely at tier tier. I like to avoid uh, Sargoth spice got it so what we do now is we go to the goods. They only have one bag of spice, uh, which isn't super great. Uh, now pottery. Now to anyone else, you might look at the pottery and be like, well, okay, pottery. This is actually pretty expensive pottery here. 78 is pretty expensive per pottery. So Shariz hasn't kind of generated anything for us. It's only generated one root. Um, uh, of spice uh, for us um, but and that was at Sargoth right so Sargoth is at the edges of Nordic territory holy crap Kura got taken by the Nords as well you don't want to come here uh, this is like the single most deadliest coast in Calradia this one and this one so many sea raiders it's virtually impossible to move around with heavy objects and heavy trade so Sargoth is the trip. Keep in mind we want to stop by at Velusha, Jelkala, uh, and Yalin at the end. So the way we're going to start generating is we're going to go now from Sherry's upwards. So let's make a trip to Halmar. And again, in the next episodes, I won't really show you most of the traveling. I'll just show you updates. I'll edit things together, but I wanted to show everybody uh, the trip and kind of how it works. So I'll visit Halmar, I'll stay here for a bit, and I'll get some pricing. This is really not good. Um, one, all of these cities are very far away, and the return isn't very great. So we're actually not going to buy anything. We're going to actually go into the goods. Just have a look, quick look, seeing if anything is a little bit cheaper. This is cheap grapes. I'm always on the lookout for grapes. Unfortunately, my guy has started eating that one. No, he hasn't. This is good. This is good. Uh, so let me take this the grapes. So this is to Sargoth. These are for my vineyard, right? I'm, I'm, I've always got to be collecting grapes and now I have uh, you know I can either go north and kind of make a, a big trip, but 
Since I don't have anything to deposit in Tolga, Uchamor, or Kidan, I'm just gonna continue from Holmar all the way across the Swadian Plain and go to Revidan. Now in Revidan we can expect to see uh, some silk production. Oh, there's lots of... Uh, there's lots of Nords getting ready to capture that. So let's see what they have here. Oh my god. I got... I, I was in the city when they besieged it. Wine to Cherise, you see? Wine to Cherise for 127. Uh, that's not too great. Why? Because we're still too close to the start of the trip and it wine is heavy. Uh, so we're just gonna exit out. Let's visit Kura. And check the market prices at Kura. Now some people were saying that this was taking way too long. And I, I completely agree, this takes way longer than just, you know, raiding and playing it like you normally do, but I'm bored of that other shit, man. So, tools at 177 for Barrier and iron to Sargoth. So, now we have two destinations to Sargoth and some really nice tools for Barrier here. So, this is the Sargoth line. When I first started, I used to write this down, but now I don't need to. So this is going to bring us down for a bit. And more grapes. Nice. So these are Tabarie. So now we're on our way to Sargoth. Now we're at Kura. This is basically a straight path to Sargoth. And this is something I've also learned from, you know, kind of experience. Never go through this path. Always go uh, by uh, Timarala Castle or Ismirala Castle and head your way down here. This is much safer. Because lords will be patro patrolling here, there'll be less uh, raiders around. So here we are at Sargoth. Let's assess their prices before we sell anything. So again, Berrier is has lots of wine. And notice how wine is always high yielding in the Sternid cities. And we're going to come back to this uh, a, a little bit later. Um, linen to Shariz. That's good. So now we buy linen from these guys it says now we're gonna pay right well we're gonna trade in these things they actually don't have enough money <laughs> for us to be able to do this but they have lots of uh, lots of grapes here these are pretty expensive grapes um, pretty expensive drapes drapes lol pretty expensive grapes Pretty expensive pottery. Um, I'll, I know what I'll do. I'll take the iron back here. And I'll go to the armor and I'll sell the iron to the armor. People were saying this wasn't a mod. This is a mod. You can see there's lots of new items in here, but it's very subtle. So now we've got rid of the Sargoth line. This is to Ahmarad. This is to Berrier. And this is to Shariz. So now we're at Sargoth. I could go to Tyr, but again, I don't want to do this. My target now is going to be directly to Suno. And the reason I want to go to Suno is I've been actually monitoring some things at Suno recently. Uh, Suno has always been requesting uh, dyes. And anytime I get, you know, anytime I get a notification or anytime I do assessing prices, I sometimes get that selling raw silk at Suno is always very profitable. This tells you that raw silk is expensive here. You can see Velvet, Velvet is selling right off the bat at almost a thousand. They don't have any raw resources for it. And if you go to the um, to the Guildmaster here. Hello, dude. I had to do some jobs for him to get him nice and uh, moist. <laughs> uh, if I build a weavery here, it's only going to be making 29 dinars a week. And I know, I know this is going to be like, okay, you guys are, GD, you're crazy. This is like not enough. 29 dinars a week is not enough to make a business. But I ask the question, can we actually begin a kind of double trading path? And this, this might be something that might be a little bit too hard to juggle just to keep everything in your head. So basically we would have, uh, we would have a, uh, a weavery at Suno that would be that would be based off of raw resources coming out of these areas here. 
all of these villages uh, and all of these towns will usually have raw silk at very cheap prices. If we can carry those to Suno, stockpile our weavery, um, leave it there for a week to make stuff, go to the Rodox, buy the grapes, and then head over there to Shariz, sell the linens, sell the tools, um, sell any wine that we've picked up along the way, and go to Ahmarad then. At Ahmarad, we will deposit our grapes, and then we can continue on the journey. So this this might be something that I might go uh, forward with, but for now, I want to kind of um, watch it. You know, let's watch. Let's watch the velvet prices, and if they're stable, uh, if they're stubble, if they're stable, if they're steady, uh, and if they are, my mistress wants to see me, and if they are, then we go ahead for it. So Kura wants 139 oil. Wine to Shiraz, again, not super great. The reason I'm not buying any wine, I'll let you know here in a, little, in a little bit. One, wine is super heavy. Two, the only real wine producer in the lands of the Cernids is my wine, is my vineyard. So, why would I be, why would I be kind of doing that to myself? So, what I do is I would usually, um... Like, let's say, like right now, the returns for my vineyard for the past couple of weeks have been down to 250. So what this means is that the supply in the market is becoming strong enough that the prices are dropping. I'm actually going to, once we get to Amarad, I'm going to tell the vineyard guy to stop producing more. To stop selling to the market. And that's going to stockpile it up for a little bit. Supply is going to go down. Demand's going to go up. Well, demand's always basically stable. And then that will drive the prices upwards. So wool to Ichamur and olives to Nara. I like Ichamur actually. Yeah, I like Ichamur. So let's go ahead and purchase that wool. If it's a lot of wool, then that'll be better than if it's than if it's just a little bit of wool. It's one bag of wool. That's not worth it. So the grapes here are selling at 100. Again, this is much better than the price I can get in Ahmarad. In Ahmarad, you get grapes for 250 each. So you can see how that's an issue. So now we're, here we are at Volusia. And we're going to make pit stops by the cities. And try to see if peasants have grapes on them. If there's grapes then we purchase grapes. If there aren't grapes, we look at the other prices and we buy cheap things like this cheap cabbage. This town, or this village, they have very cheap grapes at 37. We'll visit the city of Ilvia. And the reason Yalin is kind of like the furthest point, or like kind of, you can think of it as kind of like the... The destination, or like, it's the it's the point in the route where we start going back to where we came from. Yalin has the highest production in all of Calradia in my playthrough here. So they always have things. Um, this wasn't too great, actually. Oil at Kura. Kura is way too out of our way. So oil, we'd have to carry all... We'd have to carry the oil all the way up and around. So that's that's bad. Okay, let's see if they have any grapes. They do, again, 100 for the grapes. Uh, not super great. Not super great, but better than what we can get. Really, I want to find... I Like, really, I want to find them at the villages. That is... Uh, and you can notice I keep getting these scout reports. Oops. I'm going to actually fight these guys. Oh, that was close. Sinbad the Merchant defeats seven seven trappers. Another interesting thing is that I seem to always be getting... <laughs> you guys are going to find this fucking hilarious. But I always seem to be getting ransoms on my head wherever I go. <laughs> People want this merchant dead, man. No, where are you going? Down here. Oh, shit, that's a cliff. That's why he hasn't been able to go down. I'm just going to wait a little bit for these uh, looters here to move away because we're pretty slow right now. 4.8 4 daylight traversing speed is not fun and it's because of all these things we're carrying. 
So that's really the biggest issue is do you want or can I even afford to let it to let my to let my inventory get that big, really? That's the biggest issue. That's the biggest challenge is I see I've got to always be on the lookout for those things. Because if those guys stop me, they're going to ask for something like 1,800 or sometimes even upwards of 2,000 dinars for a, for a passing fee. And I simply can't pay that. That makes the entire trip... Um, that makes the entire trip basically for nothing. Wasted. So again, there's a lord. Lords are like the best thing I like to see. Because then people run away from the lords. So here, this is the last stop. As you can see, silk here is also very expensive. Um, silk seems to be expensive everywhere. We didn't get many, many of that. I'll show you guys the tournaments in the next episode. How the tournament system works. I think it's pretty cool. Once we make it to this city of, uh, this town or this village of Ibdilis. Um... 516 for silk is still pretty ludicrous actually even for village price we'll take this route here i found that this is one of the routes of least resistance in calradia there's virtually almost no bandits here 593 and see we're getting some money from shiriz because we also have a wine press at shiriz i completely forgot that we had a wine press at shiriz uh, i completely forgot that looks like i set that up in the last episode so here we are at Shiriz. So now in Shiriz, we're going to sell um, the linens. And we're going to end. That's going to give us 1,000 there. Then we're going to go to my vineyard or wine press. And look at this, guys. This is pretty cool. I, I know this is in other mods, but I've always liked this. So this is my vineyard. I'm going to come to this guy here, and I'm going to go, uh, let's go over the accounts. Oops. So he's saying we're making 346 next week as it stands. That is more than enough. So the fact that that's high means that I can actually now leave it um, there. I, I don't even have to stockpile anything. They're getting grapes at, at a great price, and they're selling it nicely. Again, Sherry's is not generating lots of trade for me here. And... Cities generate different trade routes based on, like, how safe it is to go there. Oh, man. Okay, so we have nothing at Durkuba. At Ahmarad, we have our... Um, we have to drop by the grapes. So, there's a scout report. These... Uh, these... Oh, shit. Is he chasing me? No, he's running from a guy. Could we get into this town? Another the, the other path I was talking about is this path over here. In the deep desert, no one actually goes. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to head to the deep desert. Got to dodge these outliers. There we go. No one's ever here. I see they're all on the inside. And now we can make our way to Barrier first. And the reason it's important to get to Barrier first is because we have a bunch of tools that are weighing us down. And these guys are filthy rich, so all these tools, we're going to get a really nice return. And then let's see if this town can generate. So this is basically what I do. I just go around, salt at Rifatchik. That has basically created the next route. So this is too much, and it weighs very heavily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm not going to take all of them. Um, I'm going to take, even, even eight seems like, imagine selling this for 100 each. So each five of them would be about a thousand, right? So that means about a thousand, six, six hundred. That's still pushing it. I'm only going to take seven of them. And again, it's because I know Sargoth isn't a ridiculously wealthy city or anything like that. From Bari, we travel to the, our ending destination, which is the city of Ahmarad. In Ahmarad, we go to the wine press here. 
And now you'll notice that uh, in Ahmarad, because our wine press has been up and running for a while, its accounting is going to be much less. They're going to be making much less for their wine. There we go, 198 dinars a week. So this is what we're going to do then. We're going to keep all the goods in the warehouse until I arrive. This means that they're not going to be selling anymore. And then we're going to stockpile... We're going to stockpile... Oh, this is used grapes, unfortunately. We're going to stockpile these grapes in here. And what that will do is it will create... Um, it'll create the wine here and it'll keep it for us, but it won't sell it to the market. And that's going to hopefully make the market pay us more for it next time we sell it around. There is no wine at all here. Maybe they're ripping me off. Maybe I should be selling it directly. Anyway. So that's basically a trip around Calradia for me. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on expanding my um, my entrepreneurship, if you like, by maybe taking more land uh, in Suno. I'm really thinking about that silk, the silk route. Haha, <laughs> the silk route. And um, yeah, I want to grab silk in, in these areas, in these areas, move it down here, grab... Uh, grapes move them to this area and that will kind of generate the money for me 22,994 dinars I think that's almost 2,500 2, from the start of the episode increase or I think we were actually down at 20k at one point so you're talking 3,000 dinars per trip sure it took a few days in game but come on you gotta admit this is pretty interesting the fact that this is one character who doesn't have uh, a party whatsoever who's literally going from town to town trying to uh, survive in in the world of Calradia. Uh, Next time we're going to be uh, headed to Kurgit land and lands of Vagers to try and get silk. If we scout out some decent pricing for the villagers and the cities we will definitely open up uh, a weavery in Suno and maybe even try to go for a lordship for another faction Funny enough, it seems that Swadia is actually the, the most stable faction right now. And I know saying this is very weird for me because Swadia is always getting destroyed at this stage. Right now, they're doing fine. Uh, their cities are buying a lot. They're trading a lot. They're not the richest, uh, but they have uh, remade and uh, rebuilt troops for this mod. So maybe we'll join the Swadians uh, to try and further our way uh, uh, around uh, form that trade kingdom we've we've wanted so yeah sorry guys i'm a little sick um i hope that uh, didn't bother you too much thanks for watching the episode let me know what you think below let me think uh, let me know what trade tactics you use to make more money where do you buy your goods where do you sell them um what routes do you take what are your favorite places to be where do you think the most dangerous bandits are and what are the what are the key routes you should be avoiding let me know in the comments below because I'm super interested in all this to see how you guys are making trade work because this is the first time I've played the game this way and I'm telling you, I'm having an absolute blast. I hope you guys are too. Remember to leave a like or a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you all in episode number two, Sinbad the Merchant.